Okay, greetings folks. Eric here, Light Wolf, whatever you want to call me. I am here to uh, give you a prophetic word that I received. Actually, it was a dream. Um, the Lord told me not to give uh, a big preamble or anything, so no preamble. I'm just going to get right into it. Now, the dream was had on... Let me see. That's a different dream. Bear with me while I get to my, my dream. Okay. I guess the dream description is kind of long, but I wrote it down, so I'm going to try to just read it off. So it was 2.19. Today is 2.21, so it was two days ago? Two days ago. And this is Sunday, so it would have been Friday, Friday or Thursday. Okay, <clears throat> so a dream. I just woke up from the most amazing dream. I was in downtown Waterloo. Or that's a town in Iowa where I grew up. Downtown Waterloo, and it seemed that I was watching an illustration on an iPad. The illustration was a 3D rendering, as if for a movie, of a brick wall in an alleyway. The man who held it was God. I didn't know this in the dream, but only after I awoke. The man looked like the Quaker Oats guy, I, I think that's William Penn, and Boss Hogg from Dukes of Hazard, mixed together in one. He was wearing a wide-brimmed hat and was dressed in pure white. As I looked at the vision on the iPad, it seemed to become real. While I was watching the screen, I was simultaneously transported to that place and time, or rather, that scene was transposed upon the alley I was standing in or near. By the way, it was daytime and sunny, like midday spring. But as I watched the screen, a doorway appeared. The man in white, who was God the Father, appeared to be pinching his fingers, as is a common gesture on touch screens with iPads and mobile phones and whatever. And as I observed the screen, the doorway, with no door, just a rectangular portal, slid horizontally as he dragged and moved his fingers. As the portal moved, I could see at least seven to 11 layers of thickness in the wall. And all I could think was, I wish I had the technical digital artistry level of skill to easily build a, a 3D scene with all those layers and textures that this guy had. It was as if the wall had been built over several times, had been built over, several times and covered over and built again, etc. And it seemed to be well fortified. The outer layer was brick. The next inner layer was stone. And it seemed to alternate layers like that, like a layer of brick, a layer of stone, a layer of brick, layer of stone. And then there was like a layer of uh, wood planks and, and um, uh, what do you call it? Chicken wire and plaster and stuff probably. And then brick and stone again. And it just went on like that till the layers were through. Uh, there may have even uh, been a layer of wood further back than that. Now, I marveled at the man in white's 3D digital modeling skills to be able to create such a scene. As he moved the portal slowly from right to left, which I note is the original direction of reading the Hebrew, Hebrew Bible scrolls, I saw the rectangle shape of the portal become jagged to show a slight cutaway of the wall. The many layers of the wall seem to represent work of many decades, but as I write this, uh, I know that it was actually many centuries. After about a minute or two, but not three, I beheld a light in the room that was behind the very last, furthest away from me, wall layer. That light was a golden yellow, as if the room itself was painted yellow and the light was from a white, bright, translucent, fluorescent overhead bulb. And also another note, um, the after a minute or two, but not three, that part was important. It seemed to me like the minutes actually represented uh, millennia. So 2,000 years, but not 3,000 years, somewhere in between there is when this is happening. This, this 
I could be wrong about that, but that's my interpretation based on the knowledge base and as much of the word that I have in me so far. So let's continue on. I saw a man in the room, and there must have been a safe. Uh, the members, the numbers on the safe were 3, 7, 9, 11, 13, 17, and 19 was the last. And I remember saying, well, don't you mean, Lord, uh, 3, 6, 9? Because that's a powerful combination. And he's like, no, this, this is, these are the numbers. And it wasn't like they were on different parts, like uh, those old safes that you see and they're cracking them. They got, a, it's like a dial, like a circle dial. And the number would appear in the middle of the dial every time. So first it would be three, then it would be seven, then it would be nine, but it would show in the same place each time. And I don't know how important it was, but it wasn't like a digital display. It was just like a, a painted on, etched on, white painted number, and it would just change. So, the safe was big and heavy and dark and black green. The numbers appeared to me centered on the spinner one at a time. That's what I've just explained. I could not see the details in the dream, for I was far away from him. But as I write this, the Lord gives me the detail I missed within. And then I was moved to call the next part Act 2. Then behold, as I watched, I knew that the man was a thief, trying to steal something. He was attempting to break into the safe in the innermost sanctum of the room. Now, something about this dream is really interesting. I perceived when I got out of the dream, you know, when I was awake, I perceived that there were two different levels of, of, of meaning for the events that were taking place in this dream. And you'll see that as I go on. Then behold, I saw another man appear on the scene. And he was well-dressed in a black navy blue shirt with a lighter colored tie. I'm seeing shiny pink and satiny gold, each individual ties that seem to be alternating. So he'd be, it'd be pink, and then it'd be satiny gold, then it'd be satiny pink, then it'd be satiny gold. But it wasn't like blinking. It was just like kind of phasing in and out electromagnetically or something. He happens to be a bald, white, middle-aged, and at first, the middle-aged man, and at first is a combination of Praying Medic, who's a guy on YouTube, uh, and Vincent D'Onofrio as a detective in uh, Law & Order SVU, or Criminal Intent, whatever one he was in. Just as he is arriving at the curb in a black limo, the thief is attempting to exit the alley with his stolen goods. Then I saw what seemed like a few minutes later, and it seemed to miss part of, I seemed to miss part of the interaction. So it was like, I saw this, and then as happens in dreams, I was then jumped, uh, and I was in another scene, in essence, that was uh, after that, but only a few minutes after that. But it appears that the thief was a man in his late 20s, early 30s. He was not a bad guy. He was just trying to feed his family and provide for them the best he knew how. All else apparently had failed, so he decided to steal the treasure in a locked vault. Somehow, in the dream, I knew that his actions would be destructive to those in the buildings around him. Those who lived in the three upper levels of apartments on the left and the right, with the first floor being always reserved for businesses. So the alley was flanked by two red brick uh, buildings. They're about four stories tall. And the bottom floor was businesses on both sides. And the top three floors were residences, you know, where people lived and they had windows that opened into the alley and stuff. Um, where was I? Okay. And the man who was the thief was dressed in workman's clothes, coveralls, and painting or plumbing clothes. His appearance was ragged and dirty. Then I saw in this dream the man in the clean-cut, expensive blue navy suit first rebuke and then counsel the young man who was thieving. The thief either attacked or ignored the man in the blue sh in the blue suit. The navy blue suit 
because I saw the man put, I saw the man, the thief, put down as if through an Aikido move on the ground on his back. And he was starting to cry uh, like he finally gave up and he was willing to admit that he was in pain or whatever. Then the Navy man leaned and kneeled over the thief who seemed to be in pain. The Navy man leaned in and counseled the thief to repent and change his ways, basically. He said something like, Now, son, you really don't want to do this and keep going down this evil path you were on and hurt these nice people, do you? Then the thief's eyes lit up, for he had started to weep and get misty-eyed just a little. It was as if he had seen the light, the error of his ways, and was ready to change. The Navy man reached down and gave him a hand and helped him to his feet. With a smile, the thief no longer left on his way to start a better life. And all the people observing from their windows cheered for the man in the Navy suit, for he had saved them from destruction and ruin, or so they thought. Now, bear in mind that right about the point where the Navy man encountered the thief, I was no longer just observing, like I said, on a small screen, but rather now I was there. I was actually a bystander on the street, on the sidewalk, observing. And now we're on to Act two, 3. Act three. As everyone was cheering for the heroism and saviorism of the Navy man, the man was standing in the alley, flanked by the two red brick buildings, and he looked towards the street, straight ahead, just like this. And then I saw he was looking toward the north, from whence comes war, and smiling and waving at the once thief as the thief left. Then behold, I saw the navy man change before my eyes. He grew three times the size of a normal man, kind of like the Incredible Hulk when he goes through his transformation. He was overweight and appeared as a villain from a Marvel comic slash movie, The Kingpin. But his shirt and suit jacket were shredded and his chest was naked. And I saw that he had man boobs and fat rolls, but also had a row of women's breasts. It seemed no more than six, so it was like his chest was huge, almost to the edge of, of, the, of the alleyway. And his hands were up like this, uh, like he was getting ready to push something. And I remember he just had a whole bunch of women's breasts. And he may have even had some down here in the lower abdominal area, but I don't remember that part. And now God in the Bible has the title El Shaddai, which means the many-breasted one. But this was both him, God, and not him at the same time. Like I said, I knew that this dream had many levels. Then the Navy man, who was now superhuman, began to push the brick walls of the two apartment buildings uh, from within the alley. He was there to knock down those walls, those structures, and the people became afraid and began to scream in terror and tried to flee and run for their lives. Some of them made it, but some of them were swallowed up. In fact, most of them were swallowed up by their own stubbornness and perished under the walls <coughs> of the building that had collapsed that had in large part crumbled to the ground. So the whole building didn't come down, just a large chunk of it on both sides. And I looked and behold, I was afraid also and preparing and thinking about fleeing, fleeing. But first I needed to see what happened to the fat man, the many breasted one, for he had disappeared in an instant. <clears throat> As I peeked into the alley again, a giant gray slash clay colored slash light pale green. Uh, how can something, something be light green and light red at the same time? That, that's kind of what this was. It was, uh, it was gray, like clay colored. Scorpion stood at the back of the alley, 
for the dead end wall, you know, the, the back of a uh, brick alley is, is often a wall. Sometimes it's a through, but sometimes it's a wall. In this case, it was a wall. But the wall was knocked down. And the giant scorpion was actually, it was acting as a demolition machine and using its stinger and its claws to destroy the people and the remainder of the buildings. So like I had saw that it had just got done just moving its body just ever so and just in the movement of its body, not doing anything crazy, just slowly moving its body, it knocked down the back part of the building. So the fat man knocked down the front part of the building and the scorpion was taking out the back part of the building. Um, <clears throat> Act 4. By this time, only a few minutes had passed, maybe five or ten total, since the beginning of the dream. The sun had begun to set. Now, it wasn't dark, but like it was one or two o'clock. Now, it sort of seemed like where the sun was at. Kat, my wife, my real wife in real life today, was there with me, and she was young, like 18, in a flowing white sundress. She had strawberry blonde, sandy blonde, red-brown hair that shone golden in the sunlight. So it's like... I was seeing her, she was by me at the same time, but at the same time I was seeing her in my mind's eye or something from a, from a lower vantage point, a lower camera angle, if you might say. And, uh, and it was like she was running and the sun was shining through her hair and it was like gold and it was awesome. It was a good feeling. Uh, yeah shone golden in the sunlight long wispy hair my beautiful lady i grabbed her hand and said run and we took off together toward the east we ran for blocks and then i started to feel like i was running in mud you know that classic dream trope that happens to a lot of people but then she took off even faster <laughs> and i had to do what i could to keep up with her I knew that we'd be safe at Grandma Rosie's. That's my grandma on my mom's side. Uh, so that was where I purposed to be. At some point, we broke into somebody's house on the corner of 11th Street. And so this was in a, an area that we ran from downtown in an area that I was familiar with. And we ended up uh, at the street that's just a couple blocks before the bridge that gets us to the other side of the city. So we were at the point where we were about to cross that bridge. Uh, but we were in a house. We, we broke in for some reason. Nobody seemed to be there, but we weren't sure that nobody was there when we were in there. I don't remember why we were going. It was like we, we strongly believed people were after us and we were being chased. And like a dog was chasing us. Maybe that scorpion was transforming into a robot and coming after us. I don't, I don't know, but it was that kind of anxiety energy thing going on anyway um we had to jump over the yard so the the yard for the house that we broke into had a chain link fence that was surrounding it to keep you know animals in animals out that kind of stuff but i remember i jumped up on the fence to get over it and that's when i woke up so here's kind of the best interpretation that I was able to come up with. And I'd love to know if you've gotten this far, if you've been moved to watch this video through, if you interpret dreams and if you have an anointing from the Lord or whatever, what you think uh, the dream might mean. But this is what I came up with. The man who helped the thief is the false prophet. That's what the Lord told me. So that's not something I came up with. That's what the Lord told me. He said, the man who helped the thief is the false prophet. The Lord said, this is not anyone we have seen yet. It's not Donald Trump. It's not Joe Biden. It's not anybody in politics. It's not anybody who's involved with the cabal that we're aware of right now. It's nobody that's even on the scene. Um, that leads me to think that it may be a couple decades down the road, uh, maybe even centuries. But still, the Lord has given this to me now for some reason. So, And he told me to put this out there two days ago. And I didn't disobey. I just didn't have, I didn't end up with the time. 
And so now it's Sunday, and he told me to do it today, so I'm doing it. So, so he's the false prophet. The Lord said, this is not anyone we have seen yet, but it is a he, and he appears to be involved in the military, possibly the Navy, an admiral or jag, which is a type of uh, military lawyer, maybe. But God also said, and here's the interesting part, God also said that the Navy man represents him, God, as El Shaddai, the many-breasted one. Now that confused me, and in my confusion, the Lord said, can't I make a thing to represent two things simultaneously? This represents both, thus saith the Lord. Then the Lord clarified, the false prophet will come as one who is heralded for helping the poor, downtrodden, and stealing stealers, those who live off of the welfare, off of welfare, are freeloaders and stealers. Now the Lord was making me to feel like this was a clarification that you know people need welfare and charity and contributions uh, to get a leg up sometimes, but not to live off of. Those who live off of welfare are gaming the system and sinning and do it going against what the purpose of charity is. Okay, but they only get what is made available to them. Their cho choice in sustenance is limited. So too are those Christians who play church and aren't really in me or enveloped in me, fed by fed only by what the what they hear the pastor say, what the news says, what their Sunday school and Bible school lessons say, rather than being fed by my word, says the Lord. Rather than reading my book, they choose to let someone else read it and interpret it for them. That's spiritual laziness. For they think they need the word chewed up to be easier to swallow, as a mother bird predigests and regurgitates or vomits worms for food into her chick's mouths. And then the Lord was going to keep going, but I cut him off because my wife needed me for something. And, you know, you have to honor your wife as well as God. So, and he didn't make me feel like that was a sin. So he said, go deal with your wife. So right now in front of everybody, I say, Lord, if there's some other uh, piece to this interpretation, please give it to me now that I may share it with the people as according to your will in Jesus name. Okay. It will be done. Thank you. He said, uh, there's nothing else and to go ahead and conclude and end the video. So I hope uh, this has enlightened you and maybe, you know, I'm hoping that this stuff that I'm sharing because I'm being told to is helping somebody. I have no idea who this might be helping. Um, if this helps you in any way, give me a comment. Let me know. Let me know if how this is changing lives or... or being of importance because to me it's just me putting a message in a bottle basically all right thank you this has been eric uh light wolf uh love and blessings god bless and have a great day